What's going on, guys? It's hang us. On, hang on, hang on. My contact. Oh my goes God, Jared! I was trying to start a video. I'm sorry, here. I have an astigmatism. I so do I. It's, that's not an excuse. Damn. What's going on, guys? It's us with Custom Houses. Custom Houses TV We're on the YouTube. Here. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You can just <laughs> forcefully introduce you yourself. Introduce me, so in I'm my. I always introduce you. What are you that's doing? Dusty. Oh my God. Yes, I'm. I'm here. See what you did there. Ah. Dusty and CEO, I'm Arkandad OJ, and we're here today to tell you the top trends. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> 2021's coming to an end. So we are going to bring you guys a video all on the trends of 2022, what we think is coming, and then we'll review this at the end of the year and see if we hit the mark or if we missed it. Yeah, that. Yeah. So cheers, my friends, to the end of 2021. Do you crack them first or cheers them first? I don't know. I, both, yes. Remember that commercial where they cheers them? It was like the, the saliva strand. Ah! Oh, no. 2022, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, so the first trend we have to talk about today is one that I think is going to be super important here in 2022. I think you're going to see more sidewall. Now, I want to I, just hear me out. I don't think that that means that you're going to see smaller wheels, right? I think you're still going to see 22, 24, 26. But the thing that I'm starting to notice, especially on social media, is you're, you're seeing tires not be super thin and super stretched. So remember, a couple months ago, we went through like the whole threes on sixes thing and everybody wanted the, the super small rubber band and it seems like guys now are looking for just a little bit more sidewall well i think part of that too though is people are going with bigger wheels like 28s 30s and there's only a handful of tire sizes out there to yeah that's those. true and they're pretty much all 38s 40s or 42s so or 44 side... boggers you know exactly so your sidewall ratio isn't going to be smaller it's going to naturally be bigger even with a giant wheel because that's the only option you have when you have a 16 wide that's 28 plus inches tall. Yeah, I think that's gonna be something you're gonna see a lot uh, in the next coming months is just more sidewall and, and a little bit more square setups, you know, yep. in, in and I general. Think, like Versatire came out this year and they came out swinging with their 36 by 14 and a half or 15 and a half, whichever one it is, either way, it's a square setup. You're not they, going with the, the stretchy look that they correct. had three years ago when everyone was running a Turos and Nittos that were 35, 12 and a half on their On a 14 wide, wide yeah. They're, they're going bigger with their wheels, but the tires are there to match too. Yeah, I, have, I mean, Versatire 2 did a 39, 15, 50 R26. Oh really? Yeah, so it's like, it's square, it's big, it's not quite a 40, so you can fit it on a little bit smaller. It's, it's going to be a banger. Yeah. I dig it. So so next up in 2022, and I think you've already kind of seen it in 2021, is RGB is kind of on its way out and just white LEDs on all of the things yeah. seems to be the new like trend. Yeah, especially with like, like when we were at SEMA this year, you know, all of the SEMA builds that you saw, it was all white uh, uh, rock lights and wheel rings and everything. A lot of like polished suspension as well, which is absolutely incredible. I can't imagine polishing your suspension, but um, yeah, it was all white. There was no, or very little RGB, except for a uh, truck guru who did the whole like Armageddon style smart car sure. thing. And, and that looks super cool, but unless it's did a themed Armageddon build. Armageddon smart car? Yeah, did you not see that? No. Dude, so, so Chris rolls into SEMA, right? With his SEMA build, which is a friggin' lifted truck on like 17 by nines and 37s, like big beefy off-road yeah. shit, right? Uh, digital camo wrap. And um, he's got like these green lights that run through it. And then behind it is his boat, which is matching, same color. Yep. And on the back of the truck is like this oh, off-roady no, smart car yes, thing. Yes. It was so dope. It was super cool. But outside of like super themed builds, I don't think you're going to see a lot of RGB anymore. It's funny because I think the truck scene got wild for a while. It was all like the star, like well, first it was RGB halos. Yep or single color, then it became RGB once they had that. Then it was the chasing light ones. Yep. And all of these different like halo color combos are the RGBW, RGB rock lights and RGBW rock lights. And I even had RGBW rock lights on my black Bronco. Yep. Then I got the white one and put the white rock lights on from Black Label. And I was gonna put my other rock lights set on because I'm just such a cheap <laughs> that I literally took the rock lights <laughs> off to put them on my other truck and I never did. Yep because the white was fine. Yeah. I, I didn't need another color underneath, even though I loved running like the blue or the purple or just random single colors on my black Bronco. I just, white, white was fine and just kind of yeah. was the thing. But I think guys are seeing too, like that white is, is functional, right? It's, you it's, can drive it on the road and not get pulled over. Don't take yeah, our word yeah, for so it. In some states like, and cases and follow your legal, legal yeah. ordinance and all that good stuff, you know how it goes. But yeah, like even like hooking trailers up at night or like there's some guys with deer stands that hunt a lot that like, of course they hunt a lot, they have deer stands. I mean, anyway, there's uh, some guys that'll use them for that. Like when you're out in the field and stuff. So like they're actual, actually super functional as well, which is awesome. So. Yeah. Another trend I think you're gonna see in 2022 is, is the rise of smaller lift kits. 
You think so? Mm. So hear me out, Are right? Are you saying that because your truck's on 14 wides and 4 inches of lift? No, but what I'm seeing is a lot of guys that run big lifts come back down or guys that are looking to build their truck are looking to stay four and a half, six, right? They're not looking at 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 inch lift kits. And here's why, right? You can buy a standard lift kit. Now, albeit say what you want, right? But I like Rough Country. I think they do good stuff. You can buy a standard six inch lift kit for a uh, Rough Country lift kit for an F-150 for 1200 bucks, yep. 1500 bucks, something like that, you know? You can't buy 10 to 12 inches of lift for that. Trimming is free, yeah. right? Trimming doesn't cost you anything. So I think you're gonna see with the price increases, with the increasing price of steel, you know, with the, the shipping delays and all that stuff, you're gonna see guys go to a little bit smaller lift kit and either go to smaller wheels or narrowers or just cut the hell out of their trucks to make it fit. It's funny you say that because Coda is currently attempting to solid axle swap and four link his second gen. Mm -hmm. And just for the metal alone, for the four link and cradle, he spent $1,500. Yeah, oh, that's a whole lift kit with like decent shocks, just in steel. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think you're gonna see that a lot this year. You're gonna see guys go a little bit smaller, a little bit wider. There's a, a guy on one of the LBZ pages I'm on that's running 24 14s and 375s on a four inch lift kit. And he's like, I'm just gonna cut it. I don't wanna go any bigger. So the next one I think we're gonna see a lot of in 2022 is small forged brands taking off. You've yeah. seen it a lot with like KG1, Liberty Forged. You're seeing even like Hostile Forged. Not only like small brands taking off, Hostile is a big cast wheel company. Yep. They've had forged wheels for a while, but offering in stock forged wheels is gonna be huge. People don't wanna wait. Correct. Especially in today's times where you're waiting who knows how long for wheels to come in, get cut, get shipped out to you. When you have in stock ones and the most popular bolt patterns that you can just pick up and buy, that's gonna be the big thing going yep. into the new year. Yeah, and I think especially for that's going to be especially true in sizes 24, like 20, 22, 24, right? I don't, common. yeah, I don't know you're going to see it in like your 26, 28s, 30s, right? That's still going to be a do, uh, market dominated mostly by your force and your specialty and that stuff. But I think for your average guy that's looking for a 22 by 12, 22 by 14, 24 by 14, that you can go to HD Pro, you can go to Hostile, you can go to, to KG1 or Liberty Forge or any of those guys that have them in stock and get them at the same ship time as you would a cast wheel. You know? And not only them, but like American Force is a big one and they still have in-stock forged wheels, Correct. depending on sizes and bolt patterns too. So it's getting to be more common that the in-stock is what people obviously want because yeah. you can get them sooner and that just makes it that much easier to go for those companies versus waiting 24 plus weeks. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So the next thing, which we're already seeing at the end of 2021, beautiful December 1st rolls around and Carolina bans the Squatty Boys. Let's go, baby. Yeah, okay, listen, listen. So yes. So in 2022, you're not gonna see the Squatty Boys that you did in 2021. Mm -mm, I disagree. You think so? You're going to so. see, you're going to see guys revert back to air shocks. They're already doing it. There, there are guys in the Carolinas right now that are scooping up air and hydraulic shocks immediately, right? Because they can get to the show and toot it up, right? And make it look all squatted like they want to. And then when they get back on the road, they can air it up. Isn't that ironic though? Because like, look at all the yeah. extra money and work they're doing just to squat it, parked at a show, yeah. to then get back on the road and legally have to level it out to drive home. Yeah, it's unreal. But that that's the degree that these guys are going to. And they're probably going to continue to do so. I hope I see more of sword shocks. I know Omar's- Ooh, they do good stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, he doesn't have that truck so anymore. Cool. He doesn't? No, he sold that. That's what? gone. He's got like a reverse leveled. I, think uh, he had that. I thought he still had his big one. No, white I think one. it's gone. Oh. Maybe. I well, guess I'm not sure. Whatever. That Let us know in the comments. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That thing was sick. And yeah, like sword shocks are just dope and they look sick. And yeah. I don't know. There's something about them, but I don't want to know the price tag on them because it's more than my Bronco. Another thing, I, not so much a, a I guess a, a trend, but something I think that like aftermarket companies are gonna have to keep in mind this year. Oh my God, my contact is freaking out. Remember how I harassed oh, you about weird. your fucking contact? You're not gonna give it astigmatism or some <laughs> But anyway, um, one thing that's gonna, th that's gonna grow increasingly challenging, I think is, is aftermarket headlight companies battling the fact that OEM headlights are just getting so damn good. The new 2021s, I think it is what Kirk has. It's yeah. The new 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 21? 21. Yeah. Or is it just 21 up? No, 2020, 2020 plus. Yeah, because yeah. they were 17 to 19, yeah. 20 plus. So the new 2020 and up Super Duties, the headlights on them They're already so look aftermarket. Good. They're so good. But then you have companies like Morimoto, they're coming with headlights that 
do even more than the OEM ones. Like you think the 17 to 19 headlights are fairly modern. They're two yeah. years old. They have a lot done to them, especially in the higher trim levels. Then you see the more modals like on the giveaway truck that we had and the headlights, like you turn on. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, and they do the little chase like, thing and stuff. Yes, yeah, like the yep. little things like that, that just put it over the top. And at the same time though, aftermarket companies have to keep pushing for better quality Correct. out of those as well. Better performance, all of that stuff because you can get projectors in pretty much any brand new truck yeah. nowadays. Yeah, I mean, look at the Power Wagon when we built that with Anthem, right? That thing had four projectors in the headlights when we built it. Yeah. And, and so uh, the Morimoto headlights are fantastic, and I love those guys. They're they're awesome. They make fantastic products. But like companies like them are are, are really going to have to double down when it comes to especially the higher trim levels, right? Your base package is always yeah. going to have halogen reflectors, yes. but. You don't see so many guys buying those. They're buying no. Platties, they're buying Limiteds, they're buying Denali's. And then you know? at the same time, Morimoto, I feel like every year, it's like, how do they think of that? How do I they do that? I so don't have any idea. I can't wait to see what they do with these brand new trucks because I feel like they already have ideas and they're already in the works, they're already testing. It's probably already actually done and they're just like getting it into production now, which obviously it's a whole separate story yep. with today's no, day and age. We're not gonna talk about that. But I think they're gonna still surprise us. Even though we see these brand new trucks with brand new headlights that are incredible and we're like, these are amazing. They're still gonna be like, we got a trick up our sleeve and be like, how'd you think of that? Uh, we only got a couple left here uh, today slash this evening since Jared Tonight, wants to harass me. Stop it, whatever. It's only like 8.30. Yeah, time to go. Is it actually 8.30? No. <laughs> it's like 7.30, but it's still pretty late. Got a hot date tonight. No, you don't. Shut up. I think you're going to see in terms of performance parts, you're going to see more and more companies and more and more aftermarket companies specifically jumping on board with that EPA compliant, uh, you know, emissions compliant performance stuff. Banks Power is one that, uh, you know, instantly comes to mind. Everything that they do comes with a carb EO number because they're in California. Super dope plant, by the way, you ever get out there. It's, it's a super awesome place to be. Remember back in the day in the truck world when there was a diesel performance company that we can't name, sued everybody for the color blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was all we had to worry about. Yeah, they filed a patent on that color blue, yes, by the way. And now we're like sitting here like, can we actually do anything to our trucks? We can't yeah. delete them. Can we put an intake on them? Can we put an exhaust on them? Can we put a muffler on it? An exhaust tip at least? Yeah. The answer is like no to all of it because yeah. of the EPA. But here we are, we gotta apply with it. We gotta work with it. We gotta figure out ways around it to still make cool fast trucks. And it's not even big shops anymore. It's like, yeah. I heard the other day, there was a shop 30 minutes from here that got just got shafted a $50,000 fine because they did a, a tune and delete. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like local mom and pop shops. EPA's like, give me my money. I wonder Glenn's so secret. It's like, Glenn, we have done that truck. Nothing. Stop. It's like, Glenn, it's tune and delete. No, it's not. No, mm -mm. we don't talk about that. Mm -mm. Glenn, shame on you. Tisk tisk. Their truck is pretty cool and does some okay burnouts. Well, listen. Okay, I said okay. It would do much better if I did his burnouts. Mm. I'm definitely a better so burnout. So it's a driver mod. It's yeah, I'm a definitely a better max. burnout doer than, than okay. Glenn is. Yeah, especially if it wasn't my truck. You just, wham! <laughs> As we found out in the 8.1. one. true. We did that. On the plus side, there's a def shortage, so that's cool. Really? Yeah, there's a national def shortage so right now. So you can't delete the def system. Yep, and you but, you it, it, but you can't get it. But you can't get it. Yeah, which is gonna really transportation with all these semis that haven't done so the good news is electric vehicles are on the rise and that might just have to be the future of 2022 that is very true honestly and that's you know kind of the last point I wanted to bring up here today is just there's like four or five ev trucks coming this year the problem is they're still just coming though we don't have one here i saw the actually... rivian really i saw a rivian when we were at sema it was out oh, driving around C oh no, no it was like in out in traffic oh. Cause it drove past and I was like, that is not a, that's that's not a Tesla Wait or a, a Hummer. Minute. I was like, that's a Rivian. That's yeah, it. so they're real, they exist somewhere. <laughs> it's a real, I'm a real boy. <laughs> it's like seeing a unicorn. Yeah. Bro, I told you it's real or Sasquatch. I really saw him, I swear. <laughs> or if you're from Rhinelander. Oh, the, uh, the Hodag, yes. the Hodag. None of these guys are gonna know what the f***ing Hodag is. I hope there's one person in the comments who goes, Rhinelander, let's <laughs> yes, go. Yes, please, we do this for you. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they're they're real and they're coming. You have the Rivian, you have the H1 or the Hummer, I guess yeah, it's the good, Hummer, Hummer EV. EV. Yeah. Uh, Silverado Sierra are coming out with an I EV think truck. I one on January 1st or 5th or something. Some like early January. Like January, yeah. So the that's coming. The Cybertruck is coming some year whenever Elon Maybe. Musk decides he's gonna stop tweeting all the time and actually make a I mean, there's that, like you said, there's the F-150 Lightning, which is coming. Oh, I mean, all of that stuff is gonna be here. Even at family Thanksgiving, that was all they talked about really? the whole time was the Ford Lightning coming back and how they had one pre-ordered. But I think that's really gonna shake up the market, right? Because 
Can you put 24 14s on an electric truck? Can you lift an electric right. truck? Right, what's the lift look like? What does that lower center of gravity do when you pick it up, right? How, how rocky do they get? There's a lot and of what unknown. What is the battery miles gonna turn to when you put 37s on it? Correct, there's a lot of unknowns when, unknowns when it comes to EVs and it's gonna be really interesting, but I think it's gonna be something that truly you're going to see start pop up more, so. And on that note, that's what we have for 2022 truck trends. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Jared, for joining us. Absolutely. We appreciate it. I'm always it. here to drink beer and talk trucks. Yeah. America. F yeah. With that, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We hope you guys have a fantastic new year, and we'll see you guys, well, tomorrow, honestly. In the new year. Peace.